What's the word, y'all? Are y'all ready for take number four of this video? <laughs> they say that a series doesn't start until a home team loses. So, so far through three games, nothing has really happened technically, but I'm super excited to talk about game three because obviously the tone of this video is completely different if the Suns are up 3-0 right now. So leave a like, subscribe if you're new. All of these takes are my opinion, even though I honestly don't believe that I have takes. I just be talking. I guess that's kind of a take. Let's talk about the Milwaukee Bucks uh, dominating in game number three. At the end of game number two, Giannis had an amazing performance. He was in the huddle. He talked to his teammates like, help me, help me and nobody else was there for them. The game number three comes around. I honestly do believe that the Milwaukee Bucks crowd played a huge, huge part of this. Um, I, I ain't never found the stats to back this up, but this is just so eye testing that, of course, role players play better at home. I, it has to do with the energy of the of the arena, whatever it may be. And then the role players today, Pat Carnton, Bobby Portis, even Brooke Lopez, PJ Tucker, all had uh, uh, positive performances today at the home. And whenever Giannis at the free throw line, he had an ample amount of time. There was no counting. He didn't feel pressure. He shot 76% from the free throw line. That's home advantage. And anytime um, the Suns had anything, the crowd was rocking and everything. So shout out to the Bucks fans for, for helping this series become alive Giannis another crazy crazy performance right but here's what's crazy y'all y'all know I don't have cable um so I don't know wh what show this clip was from um but it popped up on my timeline after game number two people were on national tv having a debate a literal debate whether or not Giannis having 40 plus in game number two was good for the Bucks. I I kid you not they were on TV asking this question and literally debating about it. I cannot believe it. And some of those same people that was on that panel debating whether or not Giannis be being good in game number two was good for the team were tweeting today about how dominant and great Giannis was. You, were, you know what's crazy? Giannis was just as dominant today as he was in game number two. But guess what was different and how did they win this game? Because his other people stepped up. Who would have thought that the game of basketball was more than just one guy? In game number two, it was Giannis versus 12 people. In game number three, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, PJ, Brooke, Bobby P, Pat Connaughton, all these guys stepped up. So it's so weird how a take of a, the, the, the opinion of a player can change dramatically in the people that we're supposed to see as the experts of the sport. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not to Drew Holiday specifically, because in, in game number two, he was dreadful. He was trying to shoot through the slump. He wasn't good offensively or defensively, which is a bad thing for Drew Holiday. And in game number three, he was one of the reasons why they were able to go on that huge run in the third, because at one time, the Suns were starting to make a little bit of noise. Cam Johnson caught a body on P.J. Tucker, and they started to go on this run. I think Drew Holiday hit two threes, and he's like, uh, no, you're not going on this run. And they end up winning this game. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. On our podcast, this was like a month ago. Um, shout out to my boy D Mills. Obviously, it's not a shout out to my boy D Miller. We've been homies for over a decade now. In the Florida conversation, he was wondering uh, what we thought about Giannis being the number one option on the championship caliber team. And immediately, I was like, of course he could be the number one option. Are we being serious right now? Are we watching it? The, the guy just won two MVP awards. And that wasn't just because of advanced analytics. That's because his his he was showing his ass. You know what I'm saying? He's playing great, right? Um, and and uh, some of the people on the panel was like, I don't think so. But here's the difference. This is, this is what people get confused. No, Giannis is not a guy you give the ball to when you're down by three and you need a bucket, for sure. But that's why you supplement that with a guy like Drew Holiday, a guy like Chris Middleton. Do you know how many big shots Chris Middleton cast, how many Chris has hit for this team? A lot of them. And I understand the, the mindset of these things, right? I understand the mindset of these things because if you think about the traditional superstar in the game of basketball, right? We're talking to KDs. We're talking to Kyrie's. We're talking to James Harden. It's crazy they're all on the same team now. We're talking about the Bradley Beal. Do you know what the Steph Curry's? you know what the mold of a superstar is right now? Those are typically the guys we're down by three. I got us, right? But that doesn't always have to be the case. We don't have players like Giannis in the game of basketball anymore. A, a guy that is a superstar strictly based on his dominance. His absolute dominance. And I tweeted something along the lines like, Giannis is a pleasure to watch for me. He just is. Because in this series, we're getting a little bit of both. We got the pure dominance of Giannis that can, no matter who his defender is, he can get past him and dunk on their head. And then on the other side, I know um, uh, Devin Booker didn't have a good game, but Devin Booker bag is immense. Like, he has the big, one of the biggest bags in the league. He can go between the legs, step back, mid-range, fade away, and one. Chris Paul could cross you up, make you spin around, and throw a no-look pass. We're getting highlights at the highlights, different styles of play coming together and, and clashing. So when I tweet, Giannis is fun, and people are replying to me like, 
No, he's not. He's just dunking. He's just doing this. I'm like, bro, I think you're showing your age. I legitimately think you're showing your age. My guy Shaq. I, and I'm not I'm not necessarily comparing him to Shaq. I know a lot of people have done this recently, but I'm just saying, based on pure dominance, Shaq is the biggest force I've ever seen with my own two eyes. I know there are people out there throughout history that were just as dominant as Shaq, but Shaq is the one I got to see, so that's the one I'm referencing, right? I couldn't imagine Shaq playing in 2021 and being the same Shaq that's going to back you down three people and dunk on you and people be like, oh, that was boring. What? Are you kidding me? Giannis is fun, bro. Giannis is absolutely, absolutely fun. If I was in a position where I knew that none of these five people on the court can stop my move, why would I do anything else? And as much as I'm a guy that's like, hey, bud, you bad. You're, you got to do this. You got to do this. Fire bud. Yada, yada, yada. You got to show praise when it is due. And today, Coach Bud coached an amazing game. And he showcased what could potentially be the recipe to claw their way back into this series. Again, it ain't really, the series ain't even started. Just but listen, let me just talk about game number three. One of the part of the recipe is allowing Giannis to be a, in the pick, Giannis to set the picks, get some switches, and let him dominate whoever just switched on to him. And what does that force Monty Williams and the Suns to do? Oh, we need some help. We need to help because um because Jay Crowd is a good defender, but he can't do all of this by himself. Cam Johnson is a good defender. He can't do all of this himself. Oh, and guess who's the guy coming over? It is DeAndre Aiden. So DeAndre Aiden, whistle, whistle, couple quick fouls. Oh my God, Dario Sarge towards ACL. So instead of having Dario, who could help the situation, you have Frank the Tank. And I ain't throwing no shots at my Illinois boy because I got respect for him. But when Giannis is in the game, Frank Kaminsky shouldn't be nowhere near the rim because he can't stop none of that. The recipe, try to get DeAndre Aiden into foul trouble and let Giannis do the rest. Let Giannis do the rest. And I admire a guy like Giannis because he plays Every single possession at 100. Whether it is Chris Middleton taking a shot, Drew Holiday taking a shot, watch Giannis on, on possessions. It is very rarely that Giannis is just doing nothing, right? And that is one of the reasons why Giannis is a guy that, in the, in the first quarter, he asked for a sub because it's tiring to give 100 on offense and in defense all the time. Not many players do that. You can get away with... LeBron sometimes takes plays off. We know it. LeBron is the, one of the greatest of all time. Maybe the greatest of all time. He takes plays off, which is okay, because once he does get it going, ain't no stopping it. Giannis very rarely takes those plays off. And that matters. He he is crazy. He is absolute crazy to defend. Shout out to Bobby Portis, because even though he shot 36% from the field, his energy was electric throughout the arena. And one of the reasons why the Suns fans are really into this. Let's talk. I mean, not the Suns fans. The Bucks fans are really into this. Let's talk about the Suns while we're here, though. Um, as much as it was a great performance from Milwaukee Bucks, the Suns played terribly. They just did. Objectively, they played terribly. I don't believe that Devin Booker is going to have another 21% from the field game. Do you hear me? 21% from the field. But I kind of saw this coming. This man walked into the arena with shorts and dress shoes on. I was like, no shot. It's, actually, it's either he dropping 60 or he just going to end up with 10. And it was the 10. Um, so I don't expect that to happen again, but there was a time in this game where I feel like he took like four or five just straight threes And we're like, how about you get to your spots? Which is that that, that mid range? You know what I'm saying? Their best player tonight. The Suns best player tonight was Jay Crowder You're not gonna win a game if Jay Crowder is your best player. You're just not any other time Jay Crowder gives you six threes You should be able to win but when he gives you six and the rest of your team give you three combined <laughs> You're in trouble if you take away Jay Crowder's threes. They shot three for a 20 24 from three. And I ain't a mathematician, so I, I'm, I'm going to go to the good old-fashioned calculator. Uh, three for, what did I say, 24? 12% from three, y'all? You know what I'm saying? So this could have easily been a game you hit so many threes, but shout out to the Bucks for capitalizing on the terrible performance from, from the Suns. Um, DeAndre Aiden being in foul trouble really, really hurt. He he was kind of dominant on the offensive side of the ball very early in this game. But, of course, foul trouble hit and it, yada, this, yada, this. Mikael Bridges followed up his amazing performance in game number three with kind of a stinker here. Um, same amount of turnovers as points. It was a rough one. It was definitely, definitely a rough one. And Frank Kaminsky played way more minutes than he should have. I know he ended with about 14, but like six of those minutes were like at the end of the game because it was out of reach. So we'll say he played eight minutes or so. That's seven minutes too many. <laughs> it, just, it just really is. It just absolutely is. So, I'm excited to see what game number four brings, man. This was the game I was supposed to be in in the, in the arena. 
and I'm low-key kind of happy that I didn't buy um, because I don't like blowouts. It was a fun game to watch from home, but once it got to six minutes left, I was able to start filming this video, believe it or not, uh, because because I knew it was over. I couldn't imagine spending three thousand dollars on seats and trying to walk out of the arena with six minutes left. Nah, you gonna you gonna give me a good performance. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited. I wonder how a game like this, a series like this, changes people's opinion on Giannis, whether they win or lose. Because I don't see him having any stinker games just because he is such a dominant force. I mean, they, it might be a stinker game by his um, by his like terms. Like game number one, I actually would consider a stinker game, but obviously he's coming off that, that knee thing. Um, but he didn't have a bad game. He just wasn't dominant like he normally is. So um, these, these are the type of situations that can completely change the way you are perceived in the game of basketball. Because obviously a lot of people didn't like Giannis. Um, th thinking about his two MVP awards... Uh, people wanted James Harden to win one of them, and then the second one, I can't, maybe it was Braun. My timeline's kind of messed up. But there are a ton of people that didn't believe that Giannis deserved to, to win MVP. And then they backed it up with, hey, man, he ain't done nothing in the playoffs yet. Whether they win or lose this series, he's doing a lot in the playoffs, man. Only thing I would have wished for him um, is for him to hit a three tonight because uh, my parlay <laughs> depended on it, believe it or not. Um, but, hey, it's just a part of the game. It's a part of the game. Leave a like, subscribe if you want to.